Are you ready to do an easy block after that big toadstool block? everyone, Kristen Somm here and we are continuing with our spring showers quilt. So today we are going to do a very simple block after that more involved block yesterday for the toadstool block. So today we're going to do birdhouse one. It is on page 39 of our spring showers booklet. Is your booklet falling apart? Mine, mine fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> I've written too many notes on mine. <laughs> so birdhouse one, this is our 17th block. Oh my gosh. So we are going to use some of our products. So we get to empty another folder today. And let's go over the products that we need for birdhouse one. So on page 39, we are going to start with our main fabric. As you can see, it is the yellow with big white dots on it. And we're going to start with this at six and a half by ten and a half. Make sure and back it with feasible stabilizer. This is a big piece of fabric. So six and a half by ten and a half for this yellow with big white dots on it. That's our main fabric. And then for the house, it is the olive green silky solid. I did back it with fusible stabilizer. And this one we're going to cut to three by six for our birdhouse one. And then we have the roof. So we're not going to see a whole lot of this in our roof. It's pretty thin, but um, we're going to start with a piece of fabric that is five by three, five by three. It is that mint blue greenish bluish mint doodle fabric and again it is five by three for birdhouse one it's for the roof and then cork I love this I love cork I made a, a purse out of cork I thought that was pretty fun so cork uh, this is for the post of our birdhouse one and we're going to start with this at one and a half by three one and a half by three of the cork I did not back it with fusible stabilizer it is thick enough that it'll do just fine by itself and then we have our embroidery leather. So this was in one of my earlier packets and I didn't understand why and it somehow it got out of the wrong packet. So, or into the wrong packet. So this is for the little um, holes, the little doors of the birdhouse. And we're going to start with this at two by four, two by four of the black leather. Do not back it with anything, leave it just as is. All right, and that's what we need for the supplies. And then we are going to quilt this. So whenever we quilt it, we're gonna use batting. So our final cut size of this is four and a half by eight and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that's five by, na five by nine, sorry, five by nine for your batting. And then for the quilting, by the way, this one has special cut instructions. We'll go over that when we get there. But for the quilting, we're going to use plant two. That's with the mushrooms on it. That will be really cute on this. So we are going to use any quilting design that is four by eight. I think that this was a uh, blue design. Let me see here. Birdhouse one. It is blue. So this one is a blue design. So if you are uh, rehooping, you can do that just fine with this one because the blue designs don't go off into the seams at all. So four by eight um, in plant two. So if you're gonna double hoop this, you could easily do it with four by four twice. So a four by four and then a four by four will equal to four by eight. And since it's a blue design, you can easily use this one that, that I'm using, which is um, the mushrooms, it's called plant two. It's from Kimberbell as a direct download. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. Don't forget I said that this one will have special cut instructions, so pay attention later when we get to that point. Hey everyone, so I wanted to show you a couple things real quick. So on our Birdhouse 1 and Birdhouse 2 designs, we need to move them down. Um, and I showed you how to do that on the toadstool block using the embroidery machine. So I'm going to show you on software for these, and it's actually even easier on software. So let's go ahead and start. So I would go up here to Merge Stitch File and bring in the quilting design first. So the quilting design, let's see. So the quilting design that I'm using is plant two. So I would click on 
the block by block method. Since it's a blue design, it comes in block by block or clear blue tiles. And I'm going to do the block by block method. And I'm looking for the four by eight design. That's two by eight, four by eight, right there. So double click on that and it brings into your workspace. So I already have my hoop size set as uh, six by 10. You can see it down here. And you, if you want to do a different hoop size, you would go to this preferences folder and click on the hoop size that you want and click OK. All right, so <clears throat> here is the quilting design. Now we want to bring in the birdhouse. So I would go up here to the merge stitch file and find the design on my computer. And it is under spring showers quilt and we're looking for birdhouse one. So right there and then double click on it. So you can see that it goes to the center of the design. If you click on just the birdhouse, you can see from these little tabs here that it is right in the center of the hoop. So we want to move it down so it doesn't look like our birdhouse is floating. So if you just click on the last thing that you brought in and bring it down. So what we're going to look for is the, um, the batting line of our quilting. So you can see it. Um, I've got my mouse on it so it's harder to see but so right here this line not the very bottom line but the second one so this very last line is our basting stitch for our main fabric and this inner line is the placement and based placement and tack down of our uh, batting so that's where we want it because this is our quarter inch seam allowance we don't want it in there we want it right at the bottom of the batting so all I did as you could see is just if it's up here you would take it and move it down and you're just looking for that that line and then you want to make sure of course that it's centered so just take a second to do that and to get it just right and let's see so you want the these two lines here to be on your center guide and then this you want right on that basting stitch and you can see it better when you click away and you can see that it's right on there you could also zoom in so if i recall let's see if i click look at that so if i move this down here so i know i want this and then i can zoom in and look, it looks like I could go down just a tad bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Bring it down just a tiny bit more. And now we're right on that, that basting stitch line. And I can zoom out. Not basting, sorry, batting line. So the batting, tack down, and placement line. All right, so you saw I went to this compass rose, I think it's called. And if you just click anywhere in here, it will go to where you want the design and then from there you can zoom in using the mouse button on your mouse the the rotator um, the scrolling mouse button <laughs> I don't know. all right so and then you can go back up here and click H for the hoop and it'll show you the whole hoop so that's how easy it is to bring it down all right easy to do and like I mentioned on the video that you can if you're if you're using a smaller hoop size, you will want to do two four by four designs and you can see that this does not go into the seams at all. So this is a really good design. Any of the blue designs would work great for this um, if you are double hooping. If you're not double hooping, you can use anything that you want. It doesn't, it won't matter on this. All right, so that's how to do it. You would do the same thing on Birdhouse 2. Um, we can go ahead and bring that in too if you want. Um, so you know what, I'm going to go to File, New Page, and I'm going to find my quilting design first, and quilting bundle, and then the one, it's it's the vine, it's called Plant 1. So I would go to Plant 1, there's Plant 2, Plant 1. All right, so this is an orange design. So since it's an orange design, it doesn't have the two options of the CBTs and the block by block. It's all just the block by block. So that's how it works for the orange design. So I would just look for the four by eight down here, four by eight, and we're using the vertical. All right, so see how it goes into the stitch line here and that's totally fine unless you're double hooping if you're double hooping then you don't want that to happen all right and then we would bring in the next birdhouse so go to spring showers <coughs> embroidery file spring showers quilt and then look for the birdhouse too 
There it is, double click. All right, and again, it goes to the center and we want it down here at this uh, batting line right here, the, not the one on the very bottom, but the one up from that. So you would just click on that and move it down. Very simple. All right, and again, you can zoom in. So if you just click on that compass rose and then you can see the mouse goes wherever you want it to be. And I'm gonna just go here by the um, stem or the bottom of the the post, the bottom of the post. So you can see I'm up just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and bring it down again, just a little bit more. Make sure it's centered. All right, and all good. That might be just a tiny bit too low. Okay, good. All right, and then zoom out. Go back to that compass rose, hit H so you can see the whole hoop. All right, so that's how to easily bring your birdhouse down. I saw um, in the Kimberbellas group that somebody um, forgot to move their birdhouse, and what she did is she added grass up at the bottom. So I thought that was pretty ingenious, a good way to fix the problem. So for those that may want to um, do both of these in one hooping, just to save on time and save on stabilizer, you could certainly do that. It's They are separate blocks, but you could do them all in one hooping if you choose. They're using different quilting designs. The embroidery design is different. So it, it's a little bit of work to do it, but it's certainly an option. So let's go to File, New Page. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in my first quilting design by going to this Merge Stitch file. And I'm going to bring in from the quilting bundle, the first one was the mushrooms. It's called Plant 2. Plant 2, and this is a block by block that I'm going to choose. Oh, I double clicked, my mistake. Used to double clicking. All right, so, and then I'm looking for the four by eight plant two right there. All right, so now this is what I would do if I, if I were going to double hoop, and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to, but I know some will want to. Um, so what you would do is go to the preferences and choose the hoop that you want. My biggest hoop is a nine by 14. Those that have a, um, Solaris or Luminaire, you could use your 10 by 16 hoop. I think that's what it is, 10 by 16. Um, so anyway, just click OK. And now we have um, the larger hoop. I'm going to go here to hoop just so I can see it all. All right, and then click on that design. And here's what I would do is I would hit this rotate button. See this rotate 90 degrees. I would do that and then click somewhere on the stitching and bring that design down. I'm going to line it up with the batting. Um, so I'm going to line up this inner line with one of the grid lines. It doesn't matter which one, but you can see I've got it on this grid here. And that's just so that I can um, move my birdhouse down easier and have everything lined up. So here's the first one. So to bring in the second one, because I would want to do the quilting together personally, so I would go to Merge Stitch File and I would bring in the next quilting design. I think it was Plant One, Plant One. So Plant One, and again, if you need to double hoop, you would not want to choose this orange design. You would want to choose a blue design. So Plant One, we're looking for the four by eight in vertical. All right, and now again, it goes to the center. I am going to flip it. So right here, rotate 90 degrees. And, oh, maybe I have to click on it first. Sorry about that. All right, rotate it. There we go. And then click on the stitching anywhere to move it. And again, I'm going to move it just to the, um, so that my batting is lined up with one of the grid lines. I don't know why that's what I want to do. <laughs> I think it makes it easier to know that it's all straight and all that. So anyway, so i um, making sure it's in the center and see my batting line here is lined up with one of the grid lines. All right, so then I have both of my quilting designs and then I'm gonna merge in my birdhouse design. So I'd go to merge stitch file, bring in the first one. Uh, we can close out this quilting and spring showers and embroidery files and spring showers and then looking for birdhouse one. <clears throat> there it 
There's Birdhouse one. All right. And again, it goes to the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and I'm going to rotate it. And then remember, we want to line it up with our batting line. So I can see that my batting line is off just a bit. I'm going to do that first. I'm going to click on that. So see how it's just a tad under on the grid. It doesn't matter. It's just for my own visual. But now I've got it on the grid and I think it'll make it easier to move this design. So all I'm going to do is bring this over here, keeping it sideways, of course, and line it up with that batting line and keeping it centered. So all I'm looking at is this grid line here and this grid line here and the batting line. And again, I'm going to zoom in just to make sure that I've actually got it um, down where I want it. Let's see, So it's actually up just a, bat, a tiny bit. See this little tiny bit here? So I'm going to move it down. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more to the batting. And then I click elsewhere and I can see it. I think I'll go up just a tiny bit tiny tiny all right so see how it's right on our our batting line so that gives us our full quarter inch seam allowance and this will make it so that um, our seam allowance is clear and our birdhouse is um, on our batting line so one quarter inch up from the bottom right here the bottom is the basting stitch for our main fabric okay so then I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to bring in my second one. So I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File and bring in Birdhouse 2. There it is. Double click. Goes to the center. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to rotate it. And then my goal is this line right here, which is our batting placement and tack down line. So I'm just going to click on the stitching and keep it centered and right on that batting line. See how that looks. And then we will zoom in. Oh, perfection. All right, that is very good. I'm happy with that. All right, so don't forget when you do this, you also wanna check this center line here. So these are our two center lines and you want those lined up to the center of the block. And you can see that since I used my grid lines, that helped me to be able to know where the center is. All right. So let me see here. I'm going to go to hoop. So I'm actually not. So if you look, see how this one goes off to the edge just a bit and this one does not. I'm going to actually move this birdhouse a little bit. I guess I'm a tad above the line. And I want to make sure that this is all the way centered. Yep, good. All right, so you can see that both edges of the birdhouse are on the edge there. Same with that one. All right, so that's all good. Click one more time, make sure it's centered this way. Yep. All good. All right, so you could be done at this point and it would do the quilting and the quilting and then the birdhouse and the birdhouse. And that would work totally fine. Or if you want, you can move some steps around. It, the purpose is not to join them, although you could join the quilting if you're using the same color of the quilting. You could do both of those. I'm not sure that I'll bother, but um, actually I will. I'm going to, because then I can do the batting and um, the main fabric, I can do all of those beginner steps um, at once. So that actually will be easier. I will do that. All right. Um, so to do that, all I'm going to do, all right, so if you notice, we have a lot of the default blue and default orange in both the quilting design and in the, um, the regular design. So what I'm going to do, I think the easier will be to change the colors of the quilting. So I'm going to do that. So instead of this default blue for the first one, which is the placement of our batting, I'm going to change that. Let me move this over here. All right, so if I click on this, I can pick another color. I'm going to go with Hawaiian blue and say OK. And then I'm going to do the same for this um, placement and for the batting, placement for the batting. So I'm going to do Hawaiian blue again. Say OK, that's easy. All right, and then for this um, tack down of the batting, I'm going to change it to lava. Let's use lava. And then this one, lava. Right there. 
All right, so that's the placement and the tack down of the batting. And then for the placement of the main fabric, I'm going to change this to tropical. Doesn't matter what color you're choosing, you just want it something different than the default one because we're going to have that default one later in the design. So it's just easier if we change it. All right, and then for the tack down of the main, the basting stitch of the main fabric, I'm going to choose strawberry blonde. My son is a little strawberry blonde. All right, and this one back to strawberry blonde, say okay. All right, so then we have um, the placement and the tack down of both the batting and the uh, main fabric changed. So I would like to change the um, quilting design as well. And again, that's just so that I can um, group them if I choose. And I don't have to, but why not? More things to learn, more things to test out and try. All right, so those are done. Um, and then if we go to... The birdhouse, let's see, we have blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, orange. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my birdhouses go together. I'm going to, that's the stem. Oh, it's doing the stem first. Does it do the stem first on the second one? Yes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and change the colors on these. I think you could also do that, give it an applique job but I want them together and it will stop after the placement stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and change these. Let's see, it's down here, birdhouse one. All right, so it's on that default blue. There's lots of default blue and default oranges, so I'm gonna go ahead and just change this. Okay, so the first one is the birdhouse stem or post, the post. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on a different color we haven't used mint, so I'm going to go ahead and choose mint just because it's close by and that's easier. Um, and then I want to do the same for the second birdhouse right there and make that mint as well. All right, and then back up to the tack down of the birdhouse post. And it's currently default orange. I'm going to go ahead and choose caramel. I love me some caramel. All right, and then this one also, I'm going to choose caramel just because it's close by. All right, and what do we have here? This is the birdhouse. So the birdhouse itself, let's go ahead and choose a different color. Um, I'm going to use azure, azure for this. And then I'm going to find the birdhouse on the second one. It's right there. I'm going to change it to azure. Say okay. All right, and then back up here. So this is the tack down of the house and it's that default orange. I'm gonna change it to biscotti. And then I'm gonna find it in the second one. It's right here and change that to biscotti as well. And again, you can do these separately. It doesn't matter, but it's more um, testing with our new software, so it's a good thing to work on. All right, so now we're at the roof, and the roof is, again, that default blue. And you could just change these to jobs, like I said, but either way will work. So I'm going to change this. I already used tropical. I'm going to use mercury. Say OK. And then for the birdhouse on the second one, and change it to mercury. Where did I find mercury? Oh, you know what I can do? I can go to the palette. That makes it easy. And then click on mercury from there. I don't have to find it. That's nice. I forgot about that for a second. Okay, and then what's this one? This is the tack down of our roof. So we are at the orange. I'm going to make it sage. I like that. And then for the roof tack down it's this one and again i can go oh wait you know what oh i made a mistake since i'm on pallets that means that we've already got sage somewhere else so we don't want to use sage that was my mistake all right so on the default orange um let's choose a different color i'm going to use shell 
And then I need to fix that one up here that I made sage. We want to use shell. Oops. All right, and then I'm going to choose palette since I just chose shell, and then it'll make it easier to find it. Where's shell? Shell. And say OK. All right, and then we have the little birdhouse doors opening, and we are going to change it from default blue. And we need a color that we haven't used yet. Oh, wait, I'm on palette. Sorry, made that mistake already. Um, I don't think we've used magic mint, so I'm going to use magic mint and say OK, and then the find the door right here. It's easy to find them, by the way, because the others are already changed, and so it's the first default one that you come to. So uh, we used Magic Mint on the first one, so I'm going to do that for this storehouse. And then we have the Tack Down. Where are we here? So Tack Down of the Birdhouse. So we are going to choose a color we haven't used yet. Let's use Sand Dune and say OK, and then scroll down to the next default two, which is the Birdhouse door, and we used Sand Dune. On our first one so we'll use that again all right and then back up to the first one what is this okay now we're at the satin stitching so on the satin stitching let's see we have camel sage tidewater and linen and then on here we have shadow oh we have different colors oh because of the bird okay so the bird is on the second one but it's not on the first one so I'm going to change these colors because, see, we've got the default ones again, although we haven't used them before now since we changed the others. I'm tempted to keep it, but I'm a little concerned it might not do what I want it to do if I don't. So let's test it. <laughs> we have default 11 Tidewater. Shadow. Oh, we do need to change it because see we have default three shadow up here as a oh that's the bird legs. What is this one? His eye. So I don't know if we want to merge them. So we have a default one blue here for his wing, another default one. Oh, that's that line. We want to keep this as something different. So I'm going to change that color. And I'm just going to choose something different. So I'm going to use jungle. All right, and then I don't think we should have Tidewater, Pale Mist, Peach, Filtech, Camel. I think we might be OK. I'm going to go ahead and try it. Let's see. All right, so if we go up here to Utility, color sort and we're going to have to check it see how it does so it was reduced by 16 color changes I'm going to click on new view so that I can see what it did so we've got the first one is our placement of our batting for both blocks and then the tack down of the batting for both blocks the placement for the main fabric for both blocks and the tack down of the main fabric for both blocks. And we've got the quilting for both. That's perfect. All right. And then we have, what is it? Oh, it's the placement for the post and the tack down of the post. And this must be the body. Why does it go up high though? Oh, because this one's up high. Yep, so that's good. So placement of the, the house and the tack down of the house. And what is this? This is the roof, placement of the roof, tack down of the roof, placement for the door, tack down of the door, and then the satin stitching for both. That's perfect. And then we have Sage. All right, so this one is only doing one house. Oh, be, well, let's see. We should be able to change that. Um, I need to change the colors on the houses. Although, no, I don't because then I don't want them the same color. We want them separate. Perfect. All right, so after the post, we have the one house. 
and we want to keep it that way because we don't want them both the same color and then the um, the satin stitching of the roof the decorative stitching let's see is this this is linen oh so it's up here I worried about it being up here but it's because this one's higher so this is the the little decorative stitching on the house for that little flower and they're the same color so that's perfect and then what is this this is for his the beak and his legs so those were separated before um because of the we, we still need to do the fabric so actually we should separate that so um because we don't want his his nose yet we want the nose later so i'm going to fix that but let's keep going and see what else we have here so there's the placement for his body and the tack down for his body the placement for his wing and the tack down of his wing those were perfect they didn't group together that's wonderful and then we have the the roof or not the roof there's the roof the house and the roof and the stitching of the bird and the wing and then that placement for cutting so that all worked out amazingly perfect except for the nose and i should have caught that when it was um, when i was looking through what was going to happen so on this i'm going to go back to this other one and i'm going to change his nose let's see here in birdhouse 2 i think it was shadow so Okay, so when I click on this default three shadow, I can see that his legs and his nose are already together. I thought I, I merged them and I didn't, they came that way. But his eye, see his eye down here, that it merged together on the new one. So here's the new one and you can see it's got the eye and the nose and the legs. And we do want that, excuse me, we want that eye separate and the reason is because it's going to do that on top of the applique. So we want to do the eye separately. And so I'm just going to change the color of the eye. So instead of default three shadow, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to close this. And we're back to our original one that we merged the two together, but we haven't actually changed the, um, we changed the colors, but we haven't joined them yet. All right, so on this one, I'm just gonna change his eye. It's right here. And I'm gonna change it from shadow because we already have shadow for his legs and his beak. And so we don't wanna um, join that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Federal. Why not, right? Okay, so then let's join again and see what happens. So if we go to Utility, Join Threads, utility color sort utility color sort and see what it does the design page has been reduced by 15 color changes so that's better we did 16 on the other one and it included the eye and we didn't want that so let's do new view just to make sure and run through them we already know that it did we'll just do quick Okay, so the only thing that I see different is that um, it's doing the birdhouse one first and then the roof and then it jumps right to that cute little flower stitching and we haven't done the um, satin stitch of this house and roof yet, but it doesn't matter because we've already done the uh, placement and tack down of the fabric. So it, you could move this to later if you choose that it doesn't matter one way or the other as long as the fabrics are down if the fabrics weren't down yet then it would be a problem and you would have to move it but we don't have to it's it's up to you you can move that if you want um, we could do it after the bird even you could move these around but it's not going to matter so i'm going to go ahead and leave it just for simplicity all right and then we will do a file save as and this is just save, save stitch file as. And I'm going to go to where I have my folder, which is on the desktop. And I'm just going to title it Two Birdhouses and say save. 
So that's how you would merge the two birdhouses together if you choose. It's not required at all, but it's simple to do and it gives you a little bit more time of learning um, in Brilliance. So it's a good thing. For those that haven't purchased in Brilliance yet, and if you're thinking about it, please use my affiliate link. It is uh, Jam Affiliate. So if you go to www.embrilliance.com slash jam, J-A-M, and then affiliates, A-F-F-I-L-I-A-T-E-S slash, and then Kristen Creates, all one word. And that puts um, my affiliate link for your purchases. And over here on the left side is Essentials, and you would click on Add to Cart. Very simple. Or you can go up to the store, and from there, I think it's the third, nope, it's the first item now. So right here, and click Add to Cart. So you can always use uh, my link that is in this video, or if you look under any of my videos, you, here's a video playing right down below. It is Kristen Creates. Click that Show More button, and there's always all the links to um, the items that I'm recommending on the videos, and the, there's always a link to um, my in Brilliance under almost every video. This one's an announcement video, so it's actually not on this one. But on most videos, almost all of my videos, I have a link to in Brilliance on there, and you can just click on that to order your um, in Brilliance essentials and, and use it along with us. We're all learning it together and enjoying the process.
so to cut these birdhouse blocks, both of the birdhouse blocks, we need to um, use two of the orange pop rollers if you have the orange pop rollers. So you're gonna use the four by six and the six by eight and we're going to put them together like shown and we are going to place them on our block. So I do mine upside down. I prefer the block right side down because then I can see my seam allowance, um, but do what works for you. So you could start by doing just the large one and getting it centered for your quarter inch seam allowance on the top and the bottom, making sure your block is straight. You will need to adjust it once you put the other one in so you could do them together if that works for you you got to figure out what works best for you and then once you have the six by eight with your quarter inch seam allowance on each top and bottom then we're going to add the four by six and we're going to put that inside of that six by eight block let's see that make sure you can see this all right um, so once you have that, then you can see I've got a little bit too much room here and a little less over here. So I'm going to just move it over a bit. You want to just make sure. So this is why I do mine upside down or right side down because then I can see my seam allowance and that just makes it easier for me um, to know um, that I'm getting my quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So take a little time and make sure that you've got this right. It definitely helps if you've removed the basting stitches and the excess stabilizer because then you can really see very well your seam allowance. All right, so once you have that, then you get your rotary cutter and I'm going to be reaching around the tripod here. So wish me luck. <laughs> All right, once you have that, you are going to start, if you're right-handed, you start on the left, and you're going to push into the side of that pop roller. Move it just a bit again. All right, so um, right into the, pop, the side of the ruler. So you're going to start from this groove, put your rotary cutter in that groove, and then cut, pushing against that side of the ruler. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, down into the groove and then pushing into the right side of that orange pop roller. And once you have both of the sides, you're only cutting the sides at this point. Do not cut the top and the bottom or your block will be wrong. You can tell <laughs> because we don't have a seam allowance up there. All right, so then remove that first pop roller and we're going to cut just the top and the bottom. So you can see the quarter inch seam allowance top and bottom and again start from the left push into the side after you get into that groove and then the top and you're just pushing against that ruler all right once those are done the top and the bottom then you're going to have these little pieces left over and what i do is i take one of these rulers, you can certainly use a pair of scissors and just cut those, but I like to use this just to make sure that I'm totally straight. And you're just finishing off that cut that's already there. And then the other side, have your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around top and bottom left and right and it looks great so you're going to do that on the other block same technique pushing into the sides and using a four by six ruler and a four i'm sorry six by eight ruler and four by six ruler i use the pop rollers i think they're phenomenal they make it so much easier for me so when i say four by six and six by eight it's actually the cut size is four and a half by six and a half it says it at the bottom of your pop roller and six and a half by eight and a half our finish size because we're going to sew that quarter inch seam allowance into our seam so our finish size will be four by six and six by eight all right so go ahead and cut your blocks and then we are done with the second row.
So my shirt today is a different one. It's a zip up hoodie and I want to show you this. Look at this. How cute is this? So this is a monogram and I think it was called Patchwork Scallop Monogram by Embroidery Boutique. Isn't that unique? I absolutely love this. That was really fun to do. So Embroidery Boutique, Patchwork Scallop, and then the back. So the back of my shirt says something like, they whispered to her, you won't be able to withstand the storm. And she whispered back, I am the storm. How cool is that? I love this one. Pretty fun shirt. So remember that goal I gave you of self-love? saying nice things about yourself. When you post a picture of a block, say the positive things about that block. It's okay to share the negatives also because we're all learning from each other, but I wanna hear, wow, I did this. I'm so proud of myself. So you are withstanding the storm. I wanna hear about it. We had fun with that first birdhouse block. Wanna do another one? Hey friends, Kristen Som here, and we are working on our spring showers quilt. We're actually on the last block for row two. How exciting is that? So as you can see from the booklet, there are four rows, and so this means that we're actually halfway done with our quilt so far. Woo. All right, so birdhouse two. We did our birdhouse one already, so now we're gonna move on to birdhouse two. So there's a couple of things on this one. Um, like yesterday's block, this one will have special cut instructions, so pay attention to that part. But this one also will be a little bit different for those using a five by seven hoop, and I'll go over that. All right, so we are going to start with our yellow fabric with white dots, just like yesterday, um, the big white dots. And I did back this with feasible stabilizer. We're gonna start with this at six and a half by 10 and a half, six and a half by 10 and a half for our main fabric in the yellow with white dots. All right, and then we have the birdhouse. So this is a really cute color for the birdhouse. It is that red houndstooth. And we're going to start with this at four by four. I did back it with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers. So red houndstooth and then how cute red and orange together. Look at how cute this will be. That will be really a cute birdhouse. So this is the orange star fabric and it's going to go this way. So we're going to start with this at five by three. Five by three, it is the orange star fabric. Five by three and I did back it with fusible stabilizer. All right, and then for the bird, there's a little bird on top of this house. So this is that uh, light blue, minty blue. It's hard to describe it, sorry, but um, it is the silky solid in the light blue. And we're gonna start with this at three by two, three by two, and I did back it with fusible stabilizer. And then for the wing, look how cute this will be together. So another silky solid, it's the dark teal, and this one we're gonna cut to two by two for the bird wing, two, two by two. And I did back it with fusible stabilizer as always. And then for the embroidery cork, this is for the post of the birdhouse, and there we don't back uh, cork, we just leave it as is. So for the cork, it is gonna be one and a half by two, one and a half by two for the cork, that's the post of the birdhouse. And then for the little door, for the, the cute little bird to go in, the door is gonna be that black embroidery leather. Don't back it, leave it as is. And this is one and a half by one and a half. All right, so we are gonna quilt it. So we are going to use our batting that is five by nine. Five by nine for our batting because our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half. So we always go a half inch larger. And it can be any size, it really doesn't matter as long as it's large enough to tack it down. So a half inch larger is easy to be able to place it and make sure that it gets tacked down. So five by nine on your batting. And then for this one, so for the quilting, I'm going to use plant one, which I haven't used before. This is the vine. It'll be really cute with this birdhouse. So plant one in four by eight, since our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half, we know that we want a quilting design that is four by eight. 
So four by eight, I'm doing it in vertical. And um, so if you are using a five by seven hoop, this one is an orange design. So that means that it will go into the seam. So if you were going to double hoop, you would do a four by four and a four by four. But if you used an orange design, like I've said before, it will go onto your first hooping um, of quilting. And you don't want that. You want a standalone design that's just going to be within that area and not have traveling lines that go over. So you would not want to use this one for double hooping. You could use the one that we used yesterday. So birdhouse one, we used plant two. That was the mushroom design. You could easily do that um, again for birdhouse two. And really, if you look at it, the designs are basically connected. Where is it? Right here. So they are right next to each other, sewn together. So Mushroom 2 would be a good choice or whatever you chose to use for Birdhouse 1. You could use that or something different. So I'm doing Vine vine one, uh, vine one, Plant 1. It is a vine. So that's what I'm going to do. So um, there are special cut instructions on this one. We will go over it step by step and um, last block for row 2.
So we will go over the special cut instructions very specifically, but I wanted to show you, if you have the orange pop rollers, it makes it so much easier in my opinion. We would just layer the orange pop rollers together, the rectangle set. So this is the four by six and the six by eight, and you would do it inside of each other. And again, I will show you this, but if you haven't ordered the orange pop rollers yet, I personally highly recommend them. I think that they're very easy. In the very first block, I showed a video of how to use the orange pop roller. So you can refer back to that very first um, block that we did for spring showers. And there's a link under this video for the uh, rectangle set of the orange pop rollers. I think they're amazing. I got them when I very first started uh, with quilting and I think that they're just so much easier. Today's shirt is my favorite type of shirt. Um, so I have a link underneath this video at the very bottom. I always share a link to the shirt I'm wearing, the design I'm wearing. Um, this shirt is from Amazon. It comes in several colors. I have all of them. I really like this shirt. It fits well. It's got a little hood on it. It's comfortable. Um, and like I said, it comes in lots of colors. So this one is a cute design. I don't remember. Um, who it's by. It's either Hoop Mama or So Cute Apple Case, but I will check um, from my orders. And it says, let's see, play with fairies, ride a unicorn, swim with mermaids, chase rainbows. How fun is that? So this is a fun design. I like it, especially for the spring showers, right? We should have a rainbow on our, on our quilt. I'm surprised we don't. We've got all this rain. But anyway, um, cute shirt. I will add a link under this video with information on it. <music> 